Welcome to Wasabi Interviews, where we talk to interesting people in Japan, Hawaii, and beyond. Uh, my name is Antonio Vega. I'm the editor-in-chief of Wasabi Magazine. And today I'm joined by someone in Japan, a, a I think a uh, legendary broadcasting figure. <laughs> I, I think that is not an exaggeration. Somebody with a very, very interesting career, uh, a radio personality, and uh, all around, I think, entertainer, Kamasami Kong. Hey, bro, you stay making me shy now. I like hide my face already. <laughs> hey, Antonio, how's it? Hello from Tokyo. Wonderful. No, great. I'm very happy to be talking to you. Um, so first of all, first of all, um, I mean, a lot of people will, will know you perhaps from, you know, you've maintained the connection with Hawaii too, of course, but you, you were in Hawaii in the 70s. I think you got your start um, doing radio. Yeah, back in 1976, I arrived in Hawaii. I'm going to take mm -hmm. this mask off because it's driving me nuts and I'm far <laughs> away from everybody. As you Absolutely. Can see, there is there is no one around here in my backyard. <laughs> So, I think when I you're mean, alone, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> there is no one. There is absolutely no one here. I just want to prove that to you. Yeah. And to all of your viewers. See, there's no one here. So <laughs> I'm completely alone here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I arrived in, uh, I guess it was uh, December, December 31st, 1975, uh -huh. and oh, wow. started working at KORL uh -huh. in beginning of January 1976. I was together with uh, Lan Roberts and Big Gary Bryan and Sean Lynch, and we were broadcasting from, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember the place near Chinatown, uh -huh. right across from the old, there was a there was a skateboard rink in that area. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Yeah. Anyway, we were broadcasting from there, and I was doing a nightly show. Oh, don't lose my mask. <clears throat> Funny thing about masks here in Tokyo yeah. If you're not wearing a mask, you get really stink eye from people. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> I've heard you know that, it's yeah. like it happens. Anyway, yeah. yeah, we started working right there. Uh, Ala Park, that's what it was. It was uh, Ala Park. Okay. And uh, we were right across from there next to, oh, there was a shopping center there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, so I was doing a nightly show from 7 p.m. until midnight. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. A long, long show on the radio. Yeah. And uh, at that time, I was using my real name, which for now shall remain a secret, but some people know. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. The, the, my real name is not a good name for the radio. So the program uh -huh. director said, you're going to have to change your name. Yeah. And I said, to what? And he said, from now on, you're going to be Jack Stone. Well, okay. Very different. <laughs> Jack Stone, man. It sounds like, sounds like the name of a porno star or something like that. <laughs> Or and like I an old not... like a detective or something, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I said, no, I'm not going to be Jack Stone. He uh -huh. said, well, you have 24 hours to come up with a name. Uh -huh. And I always thought it would be a good idea to have a name that would be a sound, automatopoeia, yeah. like Nick, Knock, Dan, uh -huh. Ding, uh -huh. Bill, Bell, yeah. C, <laughs> Saw, Seesaw. I, I kind of <laughs> like that one. <clears throat> but then I came across the sound effect of a gong. I was sitting in what we call a production room at that time, and it was filled with uh, sound effect records, and I heard the sound of a gong, and I thought, gong, gong, that's it. I'm going to be, from now on, I'm going to call myself gong. Yeah. So I went on the radio that night, <clears throat> and in those days, back in 1976, we took a lot of phone calls from listeners. Lots mm -hmm. of young people would call in to make a request or whatever. Yeah. And I was on the radio that night calling myself Gong, and a oh. little girl called in, and in uh -huh. beautiful pidgin English, she said, hey, bro, what's your name? <laughs> and I was kind of in a hurry because we had six phone lines to answer there, and I said, I call myself Gong. I call uh -huh. myself Gong. Yeah. I call myself Gong. And she said, eh, Kamasami Kong. <laughs> <clears throat> and I thought, you know what? That's it. <laughs> I don't know who you are. I don't know who this little girl is. Uh -huh. um, but if you're out there listening to Antonio right now, make contact with him and he'll contact with me and I'll give yeah. you the money that I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> but what a trip. What a trip yeah. that was. I mean, it was just a case of mistaken identity. Uh, yeah, yeah. I thought from that moment on, it's going to be, I will be Kamasami Kong. And I still am. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, interestingly, that name, like it, it works really well in Japanese, right? It's very easy to pronounce in Japanese. 
well, it works not only well in Japanese, but, yeah. you know, Kong works oh, well sure. in Chinese and in uh, Tagalog, uh, Filipino, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, it was beautiful for Hawaii. Here yeah. I was, this white guy yeah. who loves soul music, playing soul music all the time, uh -huh. and uh, having the name Kamasami Kong. And everybody thought I was this big, you know, Samoan <laughs> kind of guy. And then uh -huh. when, they, when I finally got a TV show, people were saying, yeah. what? That's the bugger. <laughs> no way, Bob. So, anyway, we've been having fun with that ever since. <laughs> That's a great name. Um, so I, I have to ask you, so you you have uh, the kind of voice that I'm very jealous of. You've got this wonderful, you know, golden, buttery, you know, radio kind of powerful voice. Did you always have that voice? Oh, oh, or oh, did don't that... stop. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> did you always have that voice or did that come through practice and, and training? You know, I got that as a Heath kit and I installed it in my throat. First I built it and then I just didn't know. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, good genes. I think uh -huh. my dad had a good, really good voice and uh, yeah. I just got his genes, I guess. And it's I'm a little bit hoarse right now as uh -huh. a result of, you know, wearing a mask all the time sure. and having been in the house for the past, you know, two weeks uh, yeah, yeah, playing yeah. with my cat. But, you know... <laughs> She's my best company right now, and I think she's 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 wanting me to go out, or she wants to go out as soon as she possibly can. It's like let's get a little social distance going. <laughs> yeah, let's let's. You don't need to pet me right now. I don't need to purr. I'm perfectly okay. I'm perfectly okay without you. Anyway, she's my sweetheart. <laughs> so, um, what what took you to Hawaii then? Because you were uh, in Ohio, if I if I'm am I right? Am I well, correct with that? Yeah, I was born uh, and raised in Ohio, yeah. uh, in a small little town called Hamilton, Ohio, mm -hmm. which is just uh, about 30 miles north of Cincinnati, famous mm -hmm. for the Cincinnati Reds yeah. and the Cincinnati Bengals and Skyline Chili, if any of you have ever heard of any of those things. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, I got drafted into the military when I was uh -huh. 19 because uh -huh. the Vietnam War was on about that time. Gotcha. Okay. And I had been doing some radio and TV at my university, Miami University of Ohio. Yeah. And uh, so when I got drafted, they said, do you have a talent for doing anything? And they found out that I could do broadcasting. And so they said, well, we're going to train you how to be a killer just in case. But after that, you'll probably go to work. Uh, something like what Robin Williams did in Good Morning right. Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. And sure enough, I got I, after I finished basic training, I got sent to Korea to oh. do Good Morning Seoul. <laughs> oh, That's interesting. That's what I did. And oh. I loved it. I absolutely yeah. loved it. I loved Korea. I loved the people. I loved the food. I had such a wonderful time in Seoul. Yeah. And when it came time for me to you know, uh, exit the military. I forgot what that's called now. Um, Discharge? Discharge. There it is. <laughs> and I got an honorable one. I, got okay. an, I did get an honorable one. So when it was time for me to be discharged, I thought, why be discharged? I'm enjoying this. I'm having a good time here in Seoul. And yeah. I'm meeting lots of interesting people and lots of beautiful girls. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, so I thought, well, okay, I'll re-up for three more years. And yeah. so I did. Huh. And I stayed in Seoul for two more years, and I finished my military uh, uh, in uh, Fort Ord, Texas. No, uh -huh. Fort Ord, California. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I did some radio work there mm -hmm. uh, in in Monterey, California, and I loved it. Mm -hmm. And then I was offered another job in Eugene, Oregon. Mm -hmm. I took that. Okay mistakenly took that because it was a tiny little radio station uh -huh. uh, an oldies but goodies station that had four yeah. antennas which means it's completely uh what do you call that directional you oh. could hear it you could hear it on main street but if you uh -huh. go off of main street in eugene <laughs> oregon you could not hear it anymore uh -huh. Uh -huh. so anyway i started actively looking around for another job yeah. and i saw an ad in billboard magazine about that time because that's where everybody went to to yeah. find jobs right uh -huh. And I saw this ad that said, how would you like to live and work in the most beautiful place in the world? Honolulu, Hawaii. Yeah. I said, hell yes. Of yes, course. Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> I, so they said, send a tape and resume. Mm -hmm. So I made my uh, audition tape. 
Mm -hmm. And I put my resume together and I put it in a package and I went to a, an exotic stamp store. I mean, you know, one of those stores where they sell all kinds of stamps. And yeah. of course, I put the U.S. postage on it so it would get to Hawaii. But I put yeah. a whole bunch of other stamps on that envelope, too, just wow. so it would catch the attention of the program director. Wow. OK. That's, that's <laughs> and it thinking. did. <laughs> and he said, uh, how soon can you be here? I said, huh? how soon do you need me? He said, in two <laughs> weeks. Huh? Two weeks. Holy moly, guacamole. So I gave the radio station my two-week notice. I told my wife, we're packing up, and we are going to Honolulu, Hawaii. We're yeah. going to be living and working there. And that's how I got to Hawaii. Wow. Oh, that's You know, it, they say these days, right, you have to come up with some kind of creative resume and all that. You did it right on the envelope. <laughs> right, on the, right on the envelope, because I knew if there were probably a lot of other guys all over the world who saw yeah. that ad who would want to live and work in Hawaii. But mm -hmm. I thought, how am I going to how am I going to get noticed? Well, I, I need him to see my tape and resume right away. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, he yeah. he did. And he offered me the job. Oh, and we great. packed up and moved to Honolulu. Nice. All right. So you get to Honolulu. And then how does it come about that you end up going to Japan? Because you've been there for several decades now, right? Yeah, I have. Well, um, I was working at KKUA. And I was yeah. doing a nightly show there, working mm -hmm. with Ron Jacobs and Mike uh, Michael W. Perry mm -hmm. um, and uh, Ed Ed Kanoy, and a bunch of other really great people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was doing a kind of radio that we called Forward Momentum. Okay. Forward Momentum, I don't know if you know what that means, but it means you never... Never let, you never let the music stop. So as one oh. song is kind of fading out, you start mm -hmm. the next song and you talk over the intro. Now, mm -hmm. some people really hate that, and they yeah. re really hate DJs who do that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I was doing it, and mm -hmm. I had number one ratings. Mm -hmm. And people from Japan were coming to Hawaii yeah. and they were recording my program, making cassettes, taking yeah, yeah. the cassettes back to Japan, duplicating them and selling <laughs> them all over the place. Wow. Completely unbeknownst to me. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and then one day I get a call from this guy named Nick, Nick uh, Kato, uh -huh. who was working together with a lot of companies in Japan. And he uh -huh. said, Kong, uh, CBS Sony wants to do a record album with you. Uh huh. Huh? A record album? I don't sing. I don't dance. I'm a DJ. Uh -huh. He said, "Yeah, that's exactly what we want. We want you to be a DJ on a record." Uh huh. So we did that. It was called DJ in Hawaii. It became very popular here in Japan, uh -huh. and a whole new generation of young program directors learned how to do my forward momentum style of radio. Uh -huh. And after a while, they said, "Well, why play his record? Why don't we bring him over here to do the shows live?" Uh -huh. So that became uh, just a, 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 a many different trips of going from Hawaii to Japan, to Tokyo, to Osaka, to do live shows on radio stations. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's that's how that kind of developed. Wow, that's interesting. Um, I, I was actually looking around on YouTube um, for, <clears throat> for some, some of your stuff, and I've of course, I found your channel, the, the Kong Show, but um, I also found a couple videos of what it seems like it was that what you're talking about, the forward momentum where you were uh, introducing um, Japanese uh, artists music and you were talking over it and then it would go right into the song. Um, so it, it, not yeah, right I, into the song, right into well, the vocal of the right, song. Right, right. Exactly. Right, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So you were talking. One was like, I think, uh, Yamashita Tatsuro. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was watching that for a bit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so, okay. So you, you get to Japan and I, I guess you must have liked it because you're still there, right? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, well, uh, that was back during a time that they called the bubble economy here in Japan. Right, and you right. may remember Japan was buying all kinds of real estate in Hawaii yeah. and in New York and mm -hmm. all over the place for that matter. I mean, mm -hmm. Japan was looming large and there was a lot of money in this, in this market. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, there came a time when they said, well, we'd like you to come over here and do your radio shows for at least two weeks at a time, and then we'll record the rest, and then you can go back home to Hawaii. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I'm not really interested in doing that. I'll record in, in Hawaii, and I'll send it over. And they started mm -hmm. flipping money out in my direction. And they mm -hmm. said, well, we can make it worth your while. I said, well, right. you know, I have to pay for my mortgage, for my house, 
I have to put my th kids through college. And they kept throwing money down. Uh -huh. And they said, <clears throat> while you're here in Japan, you can live in the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. Wow. Oh, okay. This is starting to sound interesting. I might consider that. Yeah. And they started throwing more money down. And they said, we want you to feel happy. We want uh -huh. you to be really happy. <laughs> and it wow. just came to a point where it was like, you know, yeah, I think I can do this. Two weeks in Japan, 11 days. It was 11 days in Japan, uh -huh. 11 days in Taiwan, because I was also doing consultancy work and, uh, and radio shows in Taipei, right. all over Taiwan. It was a whole network, and I was a consultant for their network. Uh -huh. And then I'd come home for 11 days, <clears throat> go out to the beach, get terribly sunburnt, hang out <laughs> with my friends, smoke, drink, you know, hang uh -huh. with the brothers, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would... Go back to the airport, jump in a Japan Airlines uh, plane. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I had business class all the time. And after flying uh -huh. so much every 11 days for 18 years, uh -huh. they bumped me up to first class every time. So, uh -huh. you know, it was it was a very it was a wonderful life for a long time. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, you know, like uh, um, for anybody that's unfamiliar with the bubble economy, I mean, like oftentimes, uh, like uh, entertainers in Japan will give this example that back then you had to like flash a ten thousand yen note to get to fla to catch the attention of a taxi, and that's like a hundred dollar bill. So you had to show like yeah. taxis hundred dollar bills in order to get them to stop. Like that's how much money was around in those days. People were just throwing it around, right? It was it, it was it was a wonderful time. It was um, <laughs> it was a uh, it was, I'll just say it was wonderful. It was a really <laughs> wonderful time. And yeah. I just wish those days would come back again. But yeah, those were some, yeah, yeah. Those were some very heady days. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so yeah, things have tightened up quite a bit since then. But it's, um, yeah, it's not the same. It's definitely not the same as what it used to be. Uh, yeah. Things are pretty tight over here right now. And Yeah, well, especially now, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. like every place else, people are struggling over here mm -hmm. with jobs, with small businesses. Hotels mm -hmm. are struggling. Uh, yeah. Taxi cabs are struggling. Movie theaters, shopping centers, restaurants. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. going through it right now. I was watching a video that you had on your YouTube channel where you were showing the airport, right? Narita Airport was just empty. <clears throat> Right. No, it was Haneda Airport. Oh, it's Haneda. Oh, okay. Yeah. Haneda is in the city. Narita yeah. is kind of far out in the country. It's about mm -hmm. an hour and a half drive or, mm -hmm. yeah, about about 90 minutes to get out to Narita Airport. Mm -hmm. But Haneda is just kind of within Tokyo City. In fact, the new flight path of planes mm -hmm. landing at Narita go right over my home. So oh. <laughs> when I'm in my home studio now, I have yeah. to pause like every seven <laughs> minutes to let a jet go by. So... <laughs> I was doing that the other day and I figured, you know what, I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to explain that I'm yeah. in a flight path and they yeah. go right over my home, Antonio. It's incredible. <laughs> and I, by the time they're over my home, their yeah. wheels are already out. Oh, you know, they're, okay. they're getting ready for their landing. This is final approach. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Huh. But... <clears throat> Yeah. 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 Well, you know, if you say like, hey, I'm in the path of the airport, you know, <laughs> that's just it's kind part of, of cool. the, the charm. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you were you're talking about the emptiness of the airport. Yeah. yeah you, really, you really. Very recently, like about a week or two ago, I, I assume. But just um, just a week ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a week ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, the airport, uh, I was like, Except for the janitors, I was like the only person in the airport. And yeah. then I, when I arrived back in Tokyo this past, uh, this past Wednesday, mm -hmm. I was like the only person who got off the plane. And I wow. walked all the way from the plane to uh -huh. baggage claim through yeah. an empty, completely empty hallways. And it's, a, it's about a seven-minute walk from the plane to baggage sure. claim. Mm -hmm. And... It was totally, I, I recorded that also. So that video yeah. is up there too. If you want to see a lonely walk, that yeah, was kind yeah. of weird. Yeah, it's eerie. Yeah, It's very eerie. And you know, uh, everybody here in Tokyo, everybody here in Japan has been banking on the, the Olympics to come. So everybody was yeah. gearing up for big crowds to arrive. Mm -hmm. And so at Haneda in Terminal 2, mm -hmm. ANA just built this whole new wing to their airport, to that mm -hmm. area, to their terminal to right. accommodate international flights. And it mm -hmm. just opened three weeks ago. I was there on opening day. They right. were prepared for a big party, but mm -hmm. every flight was canceled. 
every wow. single flight on the tote board was canceled and everybody was like, what, what's happened? Yeah. You know, they put so much work in and to getting it all done in time too, because it had to be, it had to be finished in time to start sure. to accommodate people coming in from foreign countries. Right. S right. Same with all the hotels. Everybody was gearing up for the Olympics, but now, but now it's, uh, everybody's like wondering, what are we going to do? How are we mm -hmm. going to get out of this? Yeah. Yeah. So how is it right now? Is it mainly just supermarkets, convenience stores and restaurants are open for takeout? Is that basically <clears throat> it? Yeah, pretty much the same, I guess, as back mm. home. Yeah. Uh, some restaurants are open, not all restaurants. Yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, Uber bicyclists on the street oh, delivering yeah. food. So you see yeah, a yeah. lot of those guys. Mm -hmm. And not many cars, not much traffic, mm -hmm. um, not many people on the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, pretty much the same as most places around the world, I guess. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's good to hear that. I mean, people in Japan, I know that it's not as strict as, you know, really as, as here in Hawaii, for example, but it seems like people are staying home. They are trying to prevent the spread. So that, that's good to hear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so I, I had a question. I'm wondering, you, you've interviewed just so many people. Um, you've done just so much different kind of, um, you know, uh, interviews on the street and long form interviews and all kinds of people. Um, do you have any tips? Like, for example, if somebody's not much of a talker, like how do you get somebody to kind of, you know, tell you a story or something like that? Do you have any things that you always keep in mind when you're doing something like that? No. <laughs> Does it just come natural then? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh-huh. Now, I'll did that one... always come natural, though? Uh, I was the guy, mm -hmm. my real last name begins with a Z. So I was yeah. the guy who always sat way in the back of the class, <laughs> right next to the window. I yeah. couldn't, I, I, I'm a baby boomer, so I grew yeah. up in big classes. So I was sitting way in the back. I couldn't hear the teacher. All I could yeah. hear was band practice out the window <laughs> and the track team and the football team practicing out there. So, yeah. you know, I didn't get much of an education. So I had to re really um, kind of try to survive on my wits. Uh -huh. And just being a half wit, that wasn't too easy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, t I'll tell you, <clears throat> yeah, everybody has a favorite interview, you know, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Uh, I've had some wonderful times with James Brown, with Shaka mm. Khan. Yeah. I even did an interview with Donald Trump, if you can believe that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I saw a clip. Well, I saw a clip. It was, um, I think you were at a press conference or something like that. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I asked yeah. him, you know, he opened Trump. He was opening Trump Tower at that time. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. he was trying to sell, you know, units in Trump Tower uh, via this press conference. And so there mm -hmm. were all kinds of... Um, all kinds of uh, uh, business newspapers and magazines uh, yeah. at this press conference. And, and there was me. Mm -hmm. I was invited to this press conference and yeah. they put me right in the very front row. I'm not mm -hmm. exactly sure why. But I was the only guy who had no idea what anybody was talking about. <laughs> and, and finally, he said, you know what? I'm tired of answering questions about finances and money. I'm tired of answering questions about real estate and he pointed to me and he said you i bet you have a question that that's not going to have anything to do with real estate or money and mm -hmm. i thought well as a matter of fact you're right he said, <laughs> so you know our mayor mufi hanneman is a great singer and he's a great man mm -hmm. and when you have the grand opening for trump tower in waikiki would you invite him to come and sing uh -huh. at your grand opening because he has some great songs about Hawaii that he can sing. And Trump said, well, you know, your mayor is a great guy. You uh -huh. know, Mufi's a, a Democrat, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and Trump was leaning, well, I'm not exactly where he was leaning at that time, but he had some really wonderful things to say about Mufi Hanneman. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah. I sent that recording to Mike Perry and Larry Price, and they played it on their radio station over and over <laughs> and over. <laughs> it was so funny. But my favorite interview, I think, have you ever heard of a guy named Dr. John? Dr. John? I can't say it's coming to mind. Who, who is Dr. John? Dr. John is from New Orleans, Louisiana. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, he 
was called, uh, he was, his nickname was the Night Tripper. Okay. They call me Dr. John, known as a Night Tripper. Got a <laughs> satchel of gree gree in my hand. Like that. Uh -huh. Real okay. kind of swampy kind of guy. Yeah. Anyway, um, we were, I, I went to his rehearsal. Nobody was in the, in the hall at that particular time. Nobody uh -huh. except his manager. Yeah. And I asked his manager if it would be okay to do an interview. And he said, his manager said, he's all yours. Good uh -huh. luck. <laughs> and I thought, well, that was a strange thing to say. Uh -huh. So we're talking with Dr. John, and I ask several questions. What songs are you going to play tonight? And the next question came out. So, Dr. John, what's your impression of Japan? Uh -huh. And he said, well, you know, it's got, like, Japanese stuff. <laughs> if, you're looking for some, if you're looking for some stuff from here, this is where to get it. <laughs> i mean it's yeah. just classic i mean how do you you don't get answers better than that you know? no you don't that's a, it that's was a great just answer. so it's just so profound yeah no, and just, I, I, there, was, uh -huh. there was another interview i did i, I remember yeah. very well with uh, these guys named the funk brothers okay. the funk brothers we're on more number one records than the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and Elvis uh -huh. Presley combined. Yeah. They were the back backup band for all the songs on Motown. Uh -huh. They were the guys who played on every Motown song. Gotcha, okay. So <clears throat> they were uh, performing over here in Tokyo, mm -hmm. and I had a chance to do an interview with them, sitting backstage at the Cotton Club. Mm -hmm. And the next interview I was supposed to do later that afternoon was with Stevie Wonder. Oh, okay, now, wow, okay. Because yeah, Stevie was staying at the Westin Hotel. Yeah. And I just finished up the interview with those guys. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to remember that the Funk Brothers played on all of the songs, but they mm -hmm. didn't get paid like the artists. They sure. were just played like session musicians, right? Mm -hmm. So I said to one of I said to Joe, I said, Joe, I'm going to interview Stevie Wonder next. Do you have any message for him? And I was bright eyed. I thought he's going to give me a great message to, to give to Stevie Wonder. Uh -huh. And he scratches his chin like this and he says, Yeah, tell Stevie he owes us some money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, you it's, can't, it's a, yeah, it's those unexpected can't. answers that really stick with you, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. There have been more along the way. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I asked. Yeah. Shaka Khan, where she got all that power for in her voice. Where does she, where does she, where do you get that power, Shaka? And she uh -huh. said, you know, Kong, I look out there at the audience and up in the sky, I see this little green laser beam shining down on me. And yeah. that gives me the power that I need. That's wonderful. Oh, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah. How do you answer? <laughs> like a green a green laser beam, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Hey, yeah. If that works for you, then hey, that's great. <laughs> I just want to know where to get one of those lasers. Exactly. <laughs> That's the follow-up question. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, great. Um, so, I will make sure to include the link to The Kong Show, the, the YouTube channel, and anything else you want to let people know or any message or anything? Yeah, I've enjoyed talking with you. You do a great job at interviewing, too, and I'm looking oh, forward you. to seeing more of your interviews and more of your posts. And well, Thank you, you so much. Very a very charming a and witty personality. <laughs> and I wish you a lot of success in whatever oh. you do. Well, I, I wasn't looking for compliments. I was just looking okay, for... Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take it back. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, you deserve it. You, you're doing thank a great you, thank job. You, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, My pleasure. Uh, thank you for making time. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure to get to talk to you um, and someone with, with your experience. It, it's, uh, it was a delight for me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Mahalo and aloha from Tokyo. <laughs>